Yo, what is going on? Isaac Mashman here. If you clicked on this podcast, if you have made it to this point, then that means that you are somebody who values your success in life. You are somebody who is wanting to challenge the status quo. You're wanting to be above average. You're wanting to live an above average life, lifestyle, existence, whatever you want to call it. That is what this show is about. Right? It is called Chase the Vision with Isaac Mashman because some time ago I realized that you do not have to be a business owner. You don't have to be some entrepreneur to have a vision. Everybody has a vision. That's my, that might sound a little cliche. I'm not going to lie. Like that could be taken out of context. But I want you to know that this show is all about things business, branding, mindset, and self development. Anything that I have learned along my journey, along my path, I am going to be sharing with you guys. Right At the center of all success is personal growth, and that is what this is about. So welcome to another episode. If you have been listening to my show for any amount of time, you already noticed that there has been a major change, and that change is that there is now an official introduction, theme song, whatever you want to call it, to my show. That's something that I wanted to get done for the longest time. Literally, since the beginning of my show, I was like, you know what? I really want to get an introduction made, but I didn't have the ability to make it myself. Like that's not where my talent lies. And aside from that, I never made it a priority in my life. And that is a, you know, that is my own fault. Um, but over the past month and a half, I was networking with some new people on Twitter and I met this really amazing producer named hindsight. And he's not even just a producer. He's also, uh, an EDM dance, electronic music, um, you know, or musician rather. And, you know, we were just talking back and forth and he sent me a message. He's like, man, if you have any work that you need me to get done, let me know. And we hopped on a phone call, talked back and forth. And I was thinking, and I was like, you know, the one thing I haven't got done yet is a podcast theme. And this is something that I really take serious, right? I promote my podcast a lot compared to the other content that I put out there. So I was like, you know, why not go ahead and get him to, you know, see what he can come up with. And he put together the theme that was at the beginning of the show and he also the outro at the end of every single podcast episode. And so moving forward, you guys are going to be getting that new level of, um, I guess you could call a professional experience, right? There are a ton of different podcasts out there. You could be spending your time listening to anybody else, but you're here listening to me. And I am honored to have you as somebody who pays attention to the words that I have to say. So without further ado, huge shout out to hindsight. You can follow him and follow him on all social media platforms at H Y N E S I. TE hindsight official great guy really genuine dude if you need beats made if you need music made if you're looking for music he is the guy to go to so thank you for that um anyways today's episode is going to be talking about the person who you are becoming and to start off today's episode in this podcast um I really want to to begin with a story and I might have mentioned the story previous previously like maybe once or twice in an earlier episode Um, and it is a story about how I was in the car with a family member and it was about a year ago. It was back last May. It was May of 2019. And I'm not going to say who it was. I'm not going to say names. I'm not going to say relationships. Just know that he was somebody in my family and we were talking back and forth. And it was the first time that I was really uh, seeing him for, you know, like a couple months. Right. And he was someone who was close to me. He saw me growing up, you know, from the time I was like seven or eight and, you know, we, we grew up together in a sense. And he was like, Isaac, you know what, what you're doing with this whole entrepreneur thing isn't you, this whole business thing isn't you like, that's, that's not who you are, you know, like you should be doing something else, right? You could find a job, you could find a career path, you could find a trade, go in, make, you know, $25 an hour, continue scaling and make, you know, $60,000 a year, $70,000 a year. But this whole you know, motivational figure, this whole business figure, like it's not you, like, dude, like it it isn't you. And that conversation stuck with me and it didn't stick with me in a good way. It stuck with me in a way of, you know what? Um, I need to do a little bit of evaluation. I want to determine if, you know, what he said is true and how I should respond to him moving forward. And it wasn't that I ever doubted myself. It wasn't that I ever doubted what I was doing, but rather I was looking at my methods of how I was coming across and I knew that I needed to change them and reevaluate the level of 
excellence that I was operating with. I didn't want to be portrayed as that stereotypical online figure, that guru, that person who is making a million dollars off of teaching you how to make a million dollars selling courses, right? And if you've been following me, you know that I am not somebody who wants to be portrayed as a guru or be mistaken as some motivational speaker. To be honest, that's one of my biggest fears. I don't want to just be known for that. It's easy to motivate someone. It, it is the easiest thing for you to do. I kid you not. I've done it before. And it wasn't in the sense of I'm trying to hoorah, tell you to go chase after your dreams, but I'm just being real. It's not difficult to motivate a person if your energy is in the right place. But after that experience, I kind of looked at the ways that I was portraying myself online and to other people. And that was during a time in my life where I was still very young into the game. Like it was, it was a year outside of high school and I was still doing some of these videos on Lasso. And Lasso was a Facebook competitor app to TikTok. And I was doing some videos and I was like, I had the handle at hustle. And, um, you know, I was just doing like, guys, like, don't let people tell you this or that or all the other. And eh, looking back, I cringe. I genuinely, genuinely cringe because it was before I figured out what exact business I wanted to pursue. And it was before I really got my hands dirty in business. And I'm not saying hands dirty in like a, an illegal way, but I'm saying like I actually kind of put my feet in, in the dirt and I picked up the shovel and I started digging when it comes to, to building the foundation of my company and what is now Mashman Ventures and what is now dozens of client testimonials and people who I've helped in some way, shape or form through the services and through my knowledge that I've done with them. It was before all of that. It was before I had a level of credibility and the sense of actually a business formation. And I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't put blame on the person. I don't put blame on the people in my life who knew me before business and who knew me before I understood what I wanted to pursue in life. And I mentioned that story not to kind of give you a better understanding of myself and of, of my own path, but as a bridge into today's topic, which is becoming yourself. It's becoming the person who you want to become, becoming the future you. It is not something that just happens overnight. And this is not going to be some, you know, cringy, cheesy episode. This is, this is real. This is truthful. And I'm going to be discussing things that are of serious nature. If you are somebody who, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, wants to live an above average life or be an above average individual. These celebrities and these entrepreneurs and business owners who we look up to and who we aspire to be like and who we actually, you know, follow on Instagram and pay attention to their lifestyle, they did not get to where they are today through normal means of effort. It took them extraordinary amounts of time and effort to become the people who they are today and who millions of people look up to. Celebrities, right? If you are paying attention to anybody in the rap game over the past couple of years, I mentioned rap because I listen to a lot of rap music. I've been in the, the hip hop industry when it comes or the hip hop genre when it comes to working with artists. I've helped clients in the past in that genre, and I'm, I'm mainly familiar with it. So I'm going to talk about something I'm familiar with. Uh, there's a rapper, Gucci Mane, and chances are you probably know who he is, even if you don't like rap music or even if you don't like Gucci Mane's music. But he went from going to prison multiple times. I think the last sentence he was at was seven years. He was in prison. He got out and he completely transformed himself. He went from a, a, a you know, a overweight, obese guy who was short, had a little, you know, beer belly, lean belly, whatever you want to call it to someone who is now literally shredded and ripped in every single video. He has a shirt off. He has a six pack he took care of his health. He got his teeth fixed. He went from having the, the golden grills and messed up teeth to having pearly white teeth and having his hair shaved, having a beard, a cleanly trimmed beard, all of that. And now he was helping other people and other artists also become successful, also build careers. He wrote his own book. He has a second book on the way. He has a whole bunch of things going for him and his business is booming. His record label is booming and he has this new level of respect not just for himself, I imagine, because you have to have a high level of respect in order to change yourself, but also in the public's view and the public's perspective, because they're looking to him and going, wow, he went from this guy who was, you know, literally trapping and slinging weight on the streets to this person now who is this business owner and who has completely changed not only his life and his career path, but he's also changed his 
um, entire self-image, his personal image, his personal health, his mental health, his mindset, the way that he views his own well-being. Nothing that happens in life that is beneficial comes for free. There's a there's an energy exchange that goes on, right? Think about money. Money is just this paper currency, but you can do so much with it. It gives you power. It gives you leverage. It gives you the ability to do more things because you have something that is of value. We gave it value. And in return, we're able to receive something of value back. It's an energy exchange. The seeds in the earth, right? If you were to take an acorn from an oak tree, think of an oak tree. It is gigantic. It is, it is one of the strongest and largest trees on the planet. And you take it and it comes from a little acorn and you put it in the dirt and then it grows because the acorn is attracting things of like energy to it, right? The, the nutrients in the dirt, the sunlight from the sun, the water from the clouds, it all contributes to this acorn's growth and then eventually a root sprouts and then a leaf sprouts and then more roots and then limbs. And then next thing you know, a hundred years later of gathering and obtaining this energy and growing, it becomes the tree, which is the oak tree. It was always an oak tree, but it was just feeble. It was a, a, a seed. It was a, it, it was something that didn't have any strength or substance, but it had the potential to become something great. And that is how you are right? You're probably at this point, like Isaac, dude, you said that this wasn't going to be cringy or cheesy, but I found that honestly supplying analogies not only helps me explain my thoughts better, but it also gives you a better way to understand yourself. I'm not trying to motivate you in this episode, but what I will follow up with is how just like that acorn and just like that little thing, you have all of this potential of what you could become. You have the potential to be the next billboard charting artists, right? There have been so many different rappers and so many different artists who have popped off in the past 12 to 24 months who five years ago were nobodies. Five years ago, were still in high school. In a relatively short amount of time, I went from not having a business to starting a business towards working with clients. It's the same exact thing. You know, the person who I was a couple years ago is completely different than the person I am today because I put in time and effort to grow myself, to become more capable. And that is what this podcast is about. If you read the podcast description, I literally say it's about helping you become a more capable person because at the center of all success is personal growth, right? The more a person grows, the more successful they will become because you're learning a skill. You're increasing your value. You're increasing your social equity. You're increasing your ability to do something and deliver something of value. And I'm not even just talking about in the sense of helping other people, but also helping yourself. You have to place a value on your own like principal well-being, right? How healthy are you? What foods are you eating? Are you doing the amount of study that you need to be doing in order to, you know, become better, to keep up with your mental health, to keep up with your growth? It seems like outside of high school, most people never pick up another book. Most people never go and study another course. I was doing research on this the other day and I was like, you know what? I need to go ahead and get get more educated on the fields of micro and macro economics. And so I go to Google, I type in something and I'm like best courses to study, right? I'm not saying buy some course from an internet guru, but I am saying go take and take and take the time and do your due diligence to find your weaknesses and determine if those weaknesses are something that you should be strengthening, right? Some weaknesses you don't need to strengthen. Some weaknesses, like for example, in being an artist, if you don't like painting and you don't like being an artist and that's a weakness of yours, don't focus on strengthening that. Focus on a weakness that you actually enjoy doing or something you enjoy doing that you want to become better at. You want to become more capable at doing. You know, I feel like this is when, I don't actually don't feel like I know that this is when it's important to set your goals, to sit down with a piece of paper and a pen. I'm not talking about just typing up notes on your phone, but there are so many neural pathways and there's muscle memory that gets established through actually writing, through the hand movement, through the muscles in your hand. When you take the time and see the words that you put on paper. So what can you do to become this person that you want to become? Like, where do you start? 
and you start at figuring out who it is you want to become. I discussed this briefly, and I believe it was episode 37 of being a public figure, right? You need to determine who you want to become in the first place, but on a, on a smaller level and on a more personal level, determine what your health needs to look like, right? Do you want to be in shape? Do you want to be skinny? Do you want to be ripped? Like you, you need to visualize the person who you want to be when you're looking in the mirror, right? And this is something I've, I've battled with in the past. There have been times in my life even recently where I can't even look myself in the mirror because I do not like my body image. And that is why you take time and you take the action steps to increase your health, to increase your self-esteem, to increase your personal image. If you know that you should be doing something and you are not doing it, you will feel horrible. You will either feel horrible or you will go ahead and you know, try to make excuses for yourself. You'll lie to yourself by saying, oh, it's okay if I do this. It's okay if I don't go and work out. It's okay if I don't pick up the book and study and read. It is okay if I don't study today. It is okay if I don't send that message to that client because I'm tired, I've had a busy day. That is such a horrible trap to get stuck in and that is a downward spiral to failure, grievance, poverty, and just a not a good existence. And I'll be honest about that because that is what I witness in my own life. People say one thing that leads to two things, that leads to four things, that leads to eight, 16, 32, 64. And eventually you are just not being productive at all. And you are not growing at all. You do not have somebody in your life telling you what you should be doing. Unless even if you work a job, there is a, a, a chance that You are trained in your job to perform a task in a series of motions, and then your management is telling you, okay, well, go out and do this. They shouldn't be telling you to, you know, do the tasks that you were trained to do. And similarly with life, even on a a, a more difficult level is you don't even have management telling you what to do, right? You turn 18, mom and dad don't do things for you. You know, grandma and grandpa don't do things for you. You can't expect your business partner to tell you how to run your business if you're in partnership with them. You can't expect, you know, your significant other to to motivate you to get out of bed. Like, no, you have to go ahead and do that yourself. You have to do these things and get up and have a level of importance about your day and your tasks and your routine and know that what you are doing every single day is building you up to this image of this person and this version of yourself who you want to become. It is your present self catching up with your future self, right? You already have the future self determined in your mind. If you take the time and write out who you want to become, you will have that down pack. You will have a a spin image of how you look living up to your potential. That is what I call it. My purpose in life is to live up to my potential and to live my best life possible. Literally, that's how I phrased it. You know, I could go and read off from my actual goal card and purpose card, but I'm not going to do that right now. But just know that it is to live up to my own potential because we have one life to live. And so if you are not living up to your potential, then that means that you are not doing everything that you should be doing. And I know that there are going to be some people who say, Isaac, you are taking all the time in the world to grow and to become this person. You won't have any time to enjoy yourself. Well, what says that Doing the tasks that help me grow aren't enjoyable. Now, yes, going to the gym at five o'clock in the morning is not going to be enjoyable. Taking time to read and take notes and highlight and actually process the information I'm learning won't always be enjoyable, especially like learning micro and macro economics. Like that doesn't seem like super, super enjoyable work. No, the actual action might not be super enjoyable, but what is enjoyable is the thought of the benefit that it is giving me, the thought of how it is contributing to my life, my well-being, my future, and my success. When you feel horrible and you feel like you are not doing the things that you are doing, you need to remind yourself why you were doing them in the first place because you have to have direction. If you do not have direction, you are just drifting like a, a bottle in the sea, a paper boat, uh, just, just drifting a piece of debris and driftwood that has no purpose, that has no vision, that has no direction, that just kind of goes wherever life takes it. And that is how 90% of people live life. There is a 1% for a reason because the 1% have direction. They know where they're going. There are some instances where, you know, they might not know, but oftentimes in order to get into that place 
And to become a first generation millionaire, to become a first genu- generation success story, you have to have direction and know what you're working towards. It just doesn't happen for free. It doesn't happen without effort. It doesn't happen without sacrifice or without, again, that energy exchange. Going back to the initial analogy that I opened up this podcast with, that person in my life was correct. It wasn't me. It it was not me at the time. I had a lot of discovery to do and I still have a lot of discovery to do. But the one thing he did not take into account was that even before that conversation we had, I knew who I was working to become. And I knew that the person who I was at that present moment wasn't where or wasn't the person who I wanted to stay. I didn't want to do the same things. I didn't want to live the same type of life I was living before. I didn't want to have to worry and stress and be anxious about, you know, my finances. I didn't want to wear the $10 pair of Walmart shoes. I didn't want to go ahead and and worry about all the things that everybody else in my life consistently and continually worry about. That wasn't me. That wasn't what I wanted to do. And over the past couple of years, since that conversation, over the past 12 to, you know, 18 months, it wasn't easy. It hasn't been easy. It's not supposed to be easy. But at the same time, I feel a hell of a lot better because I know that I am doing something that is one on track with my purpose. And two, it is something that is not normal. I never wanted to be the person who was normal. Growing up, my mom had the sticker on the fridge and it was like, to thine own self be true. And the the irony was that one of her teachers actually gave it to her when she was in like elementary or middle school. And this just goes to speak about the small and the simple things in life. But that sticker was on the fridge, that magnet rather. And it had all of these fish in a stream. It was cartoon fish swimming in one direction. And then it had one fish that was, I think it was like, it was like purple and it was facing upwards. It was going in its own pathway. When you graduate high school and even prior to graduating, and then when you graduate college, you're shuffled in the direction that everybody else is going. It's the flock mentality, the sheep mentality, right? You only need one shepherd to lead a flock of a million sheep. And now that one shepherd can lead that sheep, lead that flock off of a cliff, or that shepherd can lead that flock to a green valley, you know, like not, not using a biblical analogy, you know, but at the same time, you are the shepherd of your own life. You determine where your potential goes. You are in control of, okay, well, do I want my life to go downhill? Do I want to stay and stagnant? Do I want to continuously do the same things? Or am I looking for something greater and something that's better? That is you. That is you. Take the time tonight to write out who it is you want to become, not just on a career level, but a personal level. Do you want to become a a father? Are you trying to get into better shape? Are you trying to learn a language? And then outside of this, right, you're going to hear people telling you to do these things. You're going to be like, you know, yeah, like go ahead and write out who you want to become and all this other stuff. Like I was in network marketing for, you know, a, a good amount of time. And I heard a lot of people you know, say to write out goal cards and to, to do this and to manifest your goals, but manifestation and writing goals don't mean anything unless you put in the work. And that is something I had to learn through trial and error. Even though I heard people tell me that it wouldn't come without action, I was still putting in minimal amounts of action. And because I was putting in minimal amounts of action, I was getting minimal amounts of results. You have to put in an equal amount or a greater amount of action to your goals. And then that is how momentum is built. That is how you will become and achieve success. That is how you will become the version of you that you want to be. The person who looks in the mirror and is happy and content with what they are doing in life, with who they are, with the effort that they are putting in. A dumb analogy would be, you ever eat at at, at a really horrible fast food restaurant? And I mean, not just like, you don't just get a McDouble, but you get a McDouble and you dip it in sauce and you eat a whole bunch of just shitty food off the menu. How do you feel after that meal? You feel bad, not just because you just put a whole bunch of crap in your body, but because you know that that McDouble did not contribute to your health goals. 
I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not greater than thou. I mean, hell, I went to McDonald's this morning and had breakfast. But at the same time, afterwards, I didn't feel good. If I would have had a salad or if I would have had a nice smoothie or something, I would have felt a lot better than I did afterwards. And that's why looking in the mirror, I'm like, you know what, Isaac? I might not be where I want to be. And I might not be on the level that I'm, that I want to be at right now, but I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I am committed to that growth and to the idea of becoming the person who I want to be. Follow up those big aspirations, those big dreams, and that big vision with the amount of action that you know deep down is required of you. You get scared of of putting in the effort. And I think that, guys, honestly, we're afraid of changing our lifestyle. We're afraid of changing our life because we are going to be living an existence that is not what we are used to. I think that this is an episode that I might end up going into detail on it in the future, but I think that we are genuinely afraid of our potential. We're afraid of it. And instead of being afraid of changing our life and instead of being afraid of taking the leap of faith and completely, you know, moving across the country or changing directions and changing career paths, we should cherish and embrace those changes because we know that at the end of the day, we're going to be doing something that is fulfilling and we're going to be doing something that is contributing to our growth and not just our life, right? Are, are, living a normal life is not respectable. I'm sorry. I do not think that there is any respect. Actually, I'm not even sorry. I'm just being dead honest. I do not think living a normal life in a normal existence, doing the same exact thing without trying to become the best version of yourself is something worth respecting. This doesn't have anything to do with working a nine to five job or going to college. Don't misquote me. I think going to college and working a good job and trying to move up the ranks and trying to become better and grow on an individual level and be the best father, the best spouse, the best husband, the best community leader is respectable. But what isn't respectable is embracing stagnance and embracing just life. Don't drift. Have direction. Have faith that you are going to be able to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. It's not faith in other people. It's not faith in the government. It's not, you know, I I don't want to say this in in a way to where it could be misinterpreted, but it's not just faith in God or a higher power. If you are theological, if you are a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist or anything like that, like, yes, it is important to have faith in a higher power if you are of a religion or of an ideology. But at the same time, what's more important is having faith in yourself. And for those of you who are religious, actually using the creative faculties that God gave us at birth. We have the ability to think we are the only thing on this planet that is consciously aware enough to build our own life. Don't waste it. Don't just let it deteriorate and atrophy to the point of not being useful anymore. Don't let other people and don't let Joe Blow from down the block tell you that this isn't who you are. You are not this person. You are not this billboard charting artist. You are not this model. You know, none of that stuff. No, listen to that inner voice you have and actually go and and say, you know what? You might not believe in me. You might not see where I am going, but in my mind, I not only believe in myself and have faith in myself, but I also see where I am going with my life. I see this person. It is already done. Write your goals as if they have already happened. This is from my virtual mentor, Bob Proctor. Whenever you are writing your goals, do not just say 2,500 followers on Instagram. Lose 10 pounds. Don't just put $5,000 this month. No, take the time and write out your goals as I am so happy and grateful now that I closed two clients in the total of $5,000 by October 31st, 2020. Or I am so happy and grateful now that I am toned, have lost 20 pounds, and am in the best shape of my life by November 26th, 2020. Write your goals as if they have already happened Because if you have any ounce of doubt in your mind that you are not going to achieve something, that little crack in your mental faith or whatever you want to call it. um, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this, right? 
Think of a dam, right? A dam that holds water. All it takes is one little crack for the pressure to go at this one spot. And that one crack turns into an entire break, an entire leak, and the entire dam falls apart. It's the same exact thing. It's like in the car, right? Your, your car begins to break down. You have the check engine light. You just needed a little bit of oil in the car. And then because you didn't put the oil in the car, the engine starts to break down. Next thing you know, you have a whole bunch of different repairs. It would be the same with your life. Just like with what I said earlier today, you stop doing one thing, you make excuses. It leads to two things, four things, eight things, and 30 things. With that being said, I will go ahead and wrap up today's episode Guys, thank you so much for listening to this. Honestly, 30 minutes in so far and the past couple of episodes that I've put out have been 30 and the streams are going up and up and up. And every single time I log in and check the numbers, they seem to be increasing, which means that I must be doing something right. And that also means that you guys are helping me out. That's why I ask you for one simple favor for every single episode that you get value from or you think have helped you or has helped you in some way, shape, or form. And that is to share it with a friend of yours. Share it with a family member, a business partner, a client, a prospect, whoever you have in your life. That is the way that the show will grow. That is how we will achieve momentum. And that is how more people will be on the right path to self-development, to self-growth, to becoming more capable, and to actually achieving the goals that they want in life, just like you are. Don't be selfish about this. Don't be selfish about content. Don't be selfish about your knowledge and about these things. You know, obviously don't give away everything for free, but at the same time, you have to have an abundance mindset. You have to have this mindset of, you know what? There's plenty to go around. That is how a lot of people have a lot of success and have a lot of successful people around them. I want to see my people win. I want to see you win. And I want to have a whole bunch of amazing people next to me when I get to the top. And as I continue growing, I don't think there is ever quite a top. I think that there are always going to be levels. There there are levels to progression. There are levels to success. There are levels of income. There are levels of achievement. But just know that every single level that I'm hitting and every single level that you're hitting, you should be surrounding yourself with other people who are also going in that same direction. So share this with a friend. Tag me on social media at Isaac Mashman. Um, You know, you could go ahead and tag the podcast account as well on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram at Chase the Vision or Chase the Vision Podcast and go to my website, IsaacMashman.com. Without further ado, hope that you guys are having a fantastic week and making the best out of the next couple of months of 2020. Just because the rest of the world is burning down does not mean that your world has to be on fire too.